Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. First off, I'm wearing a ridiculously large, warm, cozy jacket because it's negative 5 degrees or something like that outside, like negative 20 wind chill. It's freezing cold today, so I'm going to be as warm, as cozy as I possibly can be. <laughs> but that is not the point of this video. The point of this video is to talk about 2022 and how it went. We're going to go over some reading stats. We're going to go over my reading goals for the year, as well as my no buy year or a low by year which it really was and just kind of talking about the year overall i thought it would be nice to kind of do like a big summary video because there's lots of different things that happened and just talking about my reading in general before jumping into what i want to do in 2023 or what i'm thinking about for 2023 and all of that stuff that will be a different video today is all about 2022. So first I'll start off with the reading stats and all of these will be taken from Storygraph. I do have a Storygraph account but I keep it like private or I like don't post it publicly because that is just a for me account like that is my private record of what I'm reading not that I necessarily hide anything <laughs> like all of the books I read always end up over on my Goodreads but there is something about like being publicly facing that sometimes like constantly posting on Goodreads just feels like too much pressure. But according to my story graph, I have read 57 books this year. Editions and all that stuff varies, but I've read like over 20,000 pages so far this year. I'm happy with this number. 50 books is always my like reading goal for the year, my unofficial reading goal, mostly just because I feel like that's kind of a good pace for me to be at. If I read more than 50, then it's kind of a treat and when I read less than 50 is kind of where I'm like something is something's not right <laughs> with the way things have been going or I've been prioritizing different things things like that it like gives me it's like a good benchmark for me but I will say that like this is the lowest number that I've had in a number of years I will say in 2021 I read 60 books or about 60 books every year before that I've read like more than that so I could definitely tell that this was a lower reading year this year. In terms of the moods of the books that I read, uh, I will put the graph up on the screen so y'all can kind of check it out for yourself. But my top moods were emotional, reflective, and mysterious, which I think makes sense. The vast majority of the books that I read are medium paced books, whatever that means. <laughs> And then in terms of page count, the vast majority of the books that I read are between like three to 500 pages, which I could have told you that even without Storygraph. But I am really happy with the 500 plus slice of the pie being relatively high, or at least for me it feels like it's relatively high, and that is thanks to the Chunky Chapter Book Club. So yeah, very happy I started that. And then this section is also like a real indication of how much my reading has been on autoplay lit this year. So my fiction to nonfiction ratio is 84% to 16%. And I have found that just in general, when I am reading on autopilot and not paying close attention to what I'm reading, my nonfiction is usually between like 15 to 20%. And then it's only when I'm like actively looking at the breakdowns that I end up getting above 20%. So yeah, this is very much an indication of that my reading year has just kind of been on autopilot, not paying too hard attention to the genres or anything else this year. And then again, speaking of genres, the way Storygraph broke it down, my top genres were literary, historical, and contemporary. And of course, books have multiple genres as well. So if you like added up the numbers, it wouldn't add up to 56 books. But these were basically my top picks followed by like mystery, which again, makes sense for me. Those are kind of like my go to genres. And then I've never included this graph before, but I just thought that this was a really great encapsulation of what my reading year was like. And that is like the graph of the number of books and the number of pages that I read over the course of the year. And Look at that decline in the last two quarters of the year. Gotta love it. So yeah, those are my stats. Um, I feel like those stats kind of do wrap up the way my reading year has gone so far. But that doesn't mean it's been a bad reading year necessarily. It's just been a little bit different, a little bit on autopilot, and that's okay. That's kind of what I needed to do in order to get through this year. But overall, I would say like it's not the best year I've had reading wise, but it's also not the worst. But on to the actual goals that I set for myself. So in case you haven't watched my goals videos before, usually what I do is I like to set quarterly goals because in my head, like it's way too difficult to know like what 
a year has in store for anyone and so setting goals for an entire year never really makes sense to me. Usually what I do is like I might think of things that I want to accomplish in a year but then I'll think about it in a quarterly sense and so I'll be like realistically what can I accomplish over the next three months and I find that to be a really good time frame. So I will have links down in the description as well as up in the cards to like the last goals video that I made but the last one that I made was for wrapping up the second quarter of the year and leading into the last half of the year and then I didn't make any more goals videos mostly because I didn't have very strong goals that I was trying to stick to. My one main goal for the year was to like reduce my physical TBR but then I realized halfway through the year that really what I wanted to do was to have it so none of the books that I own sit unread for more than a year. I'm giving myself like a one year deadline to read the books that I get. And I was actually able to accomplish that. Like when I gave my last update, I think I had like three or four books left that I had purchased before 2022. And as of right now, all of the books that I have sitting on my physical TBR are from 2022. So I one that I received from a publisher in February of this year, and that's the oldest one on my physical TBR. And honestly, I think that's a huge accomplishment. Also, my physical TBR is currently sitting at 26 books, which I think is really fantastic. It's a little bit higher than I want it to be, but one of the reasons why is I got like a box set of books as a gift. I am also recording this pre-Christmas, so that number could change ever so slightly. I don't think I'm getting any books for Christmas, but you never know. So yeah, I'm really happy with the number of books sitting on my physical TBR. I'm really happy with the way that I've been working through the older books on my physical TBR and trying to prioritize those, but also just like getting the number down to the point where I can read the newer books on my physical TBR and not feel guilty about it or like spend time reading books from the library and not feel guilty about it. I will say that you know going into the new year I have books from February, March, April that I acquired either I bought them or they were gifted to me or whatever that I haven't read yet so like those will be a priority but like overall I feel like this whole like getting my TBR down slowing down the rate at which I acquire books and all of that stuff has been really really successful and then my other goal was to read more comics and my goal was also to like read one comic a month for the rest of the year from the point that I made that last video didn't happen I am having such a hard time like incorporating comics and graphic novels into my reading on a more regular basis. I maybe do one or two a year. This year I did do more than that but like it wasn't as much as I wanted it to be and I'm not going to make it a goal for 2023 but I'm hoping that next year when I get married and I'm living with a person who loves comics, my partner loves comics, that I'll end up picking up more comics because there's also some that he's read that he's like you would really love this and I was like yeah and so I, in my head I'm like you own it and so I'll read it when <laughs> our libraries are combined. So yeah overall I would say like I'm really happy in terms of like my reading goals and things like that partially because like I didn't set myself up for failure like I tried to do goals that were achievable but also did push me a little bit obviously the comics one I didn't do great on. I mean with the way my reading's been going I'm honestly happy with the way it all turned out. All right and then the other part of this video that I wanted to talk about was like how my like no spend low spend year went. I was originally gonna go through and like list out all of the things that I bought over the course of the year and stuff like that and like to me that doesn't feel like really exciting. I think like when it comes to stuff like this want to see like if I achieve like the spirit of <laughs> the challenge and things like that more than just like the nitty-gritty like rules of it and so if you aren't aware I'll have a link to the video where I originally talked about all of this but the idea was just to either minimize or eliminate the unnecessary spending over the course of the year and this was inspired by the fact that I was like looking at my 2021 spending and I was like holy cow I spent a lot of money on stuff that I'm not really sure if I should have or needed to spend that money and also like I knew that I was going to have a lot of big expenses this year or not new. I had a strong feeling that I was going to have a lot of bigger expenses this year and going into next year and there were like big things happening in my life potentially that I needed to be more wise about how I spend my money in order to do those things. So if you aren't aware, I'm getting married next year. I bought a house this year for us to move into and we're currently working on renovating the house. And so the house buying aspect of it came in a little bit later in this year, but I knew that we had plans of getting married in 2023. And so I wanted to be better about spending my money. So that way I could save up for paying for the wedding. Because of all of that combined with like having a well-paying job and all of that stuff, I also saved enough money in order to put a down payment on a house and things like that. And so yeah, overall, like I feel like this was a successful year. And also if you look at my like 
how much I spent on books video that I posted earlier. Like you can see that like I significantly decreased my spending in that specific area. And there are lots of other places where I could see that like my spending has decreased. I use a budgeting software called You Need a Budget, which I highly recommend. I love it so much. I talk about it all the time. And again, I'll have a referral link in the description in case you're interested in checking it out. But they do like, you know, little graphs and charts and things like that. And so I separate my budget into like bills, needs, wants. So bills are like car insurance or my cell phone bill, things like that. And then needs are things like paying for rent and whatever. And then I have wants and savings and things like that. And so like I looked at like the percentages overall. And so in 2021, my like wants category was 17.8% of my total spend. That was like the biggest chunk or the second biggest chunk. But basically I spent a lot on myself in 2021 in areas that I didn't really need to. And so I kind of wanted to adjust that in 2022. And like overall I did. So in 2022 wants were only like 6% of my overall spending, which is honestly amazing and actually really surprising to me. Like I didn't think it would be that low, but I'm very happy with that. This also feels a little bit scary you just because like I you know put a down payment on a house and I've spent a lot of money <laughs> for the wedding and things like that and so like my numbers are very heavily skewed in like that category <laughs> of my spending but overall I'm really happy with it again like looking on uh, like individual category year to year like my book spending is down. I did look at my clothes category because that was also an area that I knew could be problematic and <laughs> year over year not great so in 2021 I spent $1,785 on clothes or in my general clothing category and then in 2022 I spent $1,740 which you know is not significantly better however I did get a bonus this year at work and my partner was like you should treat yourself to a nice purse because he knows I like nice purses and I was like hemming and hawing about it and he's like well, just spend part of your bonus on yourself and I was like fine. So that was about $450 of that so that does bring me down to about like $1,200 spent on clothes which is again not much better but looking back on like where I spent my money on clothes like I don't really regret it. One of my things when it came to clothes spending with my no spend or low spend was that I wasn't going to buy things unless I needed to replace them and there were actually a decent amount of things that I replaced this year including undergarments which if you're a lady you know that the good ones are expensive also like I bought some jeans because one of my jeans literally got like a giant hole in it couldn't wear it out in public anymore but I will also say there was like some level of overspending in those categories so when I needed to buy a new pair of jeans I ended up buying a few pairs I'm not like mad that I spent that money though because like I wear all of those jeans on a regular basis they're all different styles and different washes and so I feel like they all have like different use cases so to speak and then like related like in the clothes category I also have the fact that I signed up for Rent the Runway I signed up for it because my work was having a holiday party and I didn't want to buy a dress for a holiday party because I feel like that's a very specific use case so I was like let me just sign up for Rent the Runway and so I just had like got charged for the second month of that that's actually where this jacket is from and I don't think I'll keep it forever but I do think it's kind of nice to have that option rather than buying clothes that I'm gonna wear once. So yeah like even though the numbers aren't significantly lower I feel like I purchased less things but I purchased higher quality things that were replacements for things and stuff like that. Like I bought some wool socks this year which I very much am grateful for on a very cold day like today. Things like that. So like overall I feel like I didn't like spend zero dollars on wants but I do think I kept it like really low. I was very like intentional with my spending this year which I think is really what it comes down to. It's not about like necessarily living like a pauper. It's about like being intentional and wise and spending your money in a way that aligns with your values which I think I did. So yeah I probably won't do another like no spend or low spend officially but I do hope that like moving forward I'll be very conscious of the way that I'm spending my money and I think that also like it helped having like very specific and large <laughs> money goals in order to help curb my spending because I'd be like well I could buy these clothes or I could have more money in order to you know pay for something for the wedding or things like that or you know help with the down payment or closing costs with the house and things like that and I do have like more of that coming next year because we're gonna move into the house and we're gonna need furniture and all of these different things and so I think that will also 
help. I think like one of the things I need to like really pay attention to, especially with house stuff is like home decor. I can see that being a category that potentially gets out of hand next year, but that's for 2023 Rincy to worry about. So yeah, that is basically how my 2022 went in terms of like my goals and my reading. Again, not the best year, not the worst year. I think there's like a pessimistic way of looking at it, but I'm not feeling very pessimistic today and overall I'm happy with it. And I, you know, see the potential and what I want to do and work on in 2023 and all that stuff. And I will have that video out possibly tomorrow. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about in this video, or if you want to let me know how you feel like your 2022 went, I would be happy to hear about that down in the comments as well. So yeah, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.